Okay. Well, again, hello and welcome to our virtual community input meeting. I just want to thank you all for taking the time to come out and share your input with us and to hear what DDOT has in store, our latest happenings. My name is Ayobami Bell Torrance and I am a marketing outreach coordinator for DDOT. I would like to now start with our introduction of the DDOT staff that is joining me on the call tonight. In no particular order, I'm just going to go as I see everyone. I'll start with uh, Ricky. Uh, I am Ricky Amakura. I'm the manager of data reporting. Don. I'm Don Lozen. I'm the regulatory compliance officer for ADA. Thank you, Brian. Good evening, I'm Brian Fisher, Regulatory Compliance Officer, uh, DBE, Title VI, and Drug and Alcohol. Kristen? Hi, Kristen, I'm also on the marketing team. Larry? Good evening, I'm Larry Luckett, Assistant Director for Vehicle Maintenance. Chief Brown? Good evening, everyone. Chief Ricky Brown, Detroit Transit Police. Mickey? Hi, everyone. Mickey Taylor Hendricks. I am Transit Ambassador Team and the Service Development Team. Ms. Walsh? Deanna? Let me see if I have Elias. Good evening, Elias Fisher, Grants Administrator. And Pam. Pamela King, Regulatory Compliance Officer, ADA Metro Left. Okay, did I miss anyone? If I did so, please go ahead and unmute yourself. All right, that looks like everyone. Again, thank you all. We're gonna turn now to our meeting rules, which are pretty simple. We just ask that you please wait to the end um, to ask all your questions or to provide your comments. You'll have opportunity to raise your hand or to unmute yourself. We ask that when that time comes that you please be respectful of our two minute time limit. Uh, please no foul language or personal attacks and that included, is included in the chat room, which will uh, open that up once that time is available. Please respect the chat. For that purposes. Also want to acknowledge our ASL interpreter who is on our call tonight to Mr. John Harvey. I'm going to turn now to our updates. We're going to do things a little bit differently today. This would be a great opportunity to find out um, some of the anything that you missed last month and then after that we will open it up to discussion. So one moment please. Okay, when it comes to our operations updates, we talked about the de-escalation and conflict resolution for training for our drivers, the constant work that we're doing to improve customer service, our DDOT standards and policies, a refresher training, including ADA and compliance issues. And we have a confirmation that there will be no additional reduction of service with the proposed January service changes. And speaking of our scheduling and service developments, that minor service change is planned now for Sunday, January 24th, that's in 2021. And those routes that will be affected will be the five Van Dyke Lafayette, the nine Jefferson and the 38 Plymouth. And those routes will be adjusted for improvements. 
For State Fair Transit Center updates, if you're not aware, uh, three workshops and two public hearings have taken place. The public comment period is now closed. Um, additional updates are still uh, available. That's gonna be provided at the Transit Hub and online at DetroitMI.gov forward slash D dot State Fair. For data and reporting, is continued progress in our technology upgrades. The new dispatching system will allow more data and information to be placed on the website. For transit police, we learned that they hired three patrol officers and one investigator. There's a joint effort with the DPD narcotics team to address complaints. And for your awareness, the city of Detroit has a zero tolerance for loitering and drinking at bus shelters, uh, on the bus at the transit center, et cetera. And those complaints are taken seriously. For compliance, you know, just wanted to thank everyone who participated in those Title VI hearings. So they're in the process uh, now of completing the FTA refresher training for all drivers. And that includes Title VI, EEO, ADA, and drug and alcohol regulations and policies. And as a reminder, everyone is encouraged to complete our voluntary participation uh, survey during this meeting and other public meetings that we have. And you'll see that uh, link in our chat shortly today as well. When it comes to ADA, um, they're continuously working with our operations team to relay input and complaints provided by uh, writers. They're monitoring and addressing concerns of bus wait time, and especially when it deals with um, among our senior riders as the weather gets colder. For Detroit Metrolift, we're monitoring call center activity that includes any abandoned calls, the queue wait time, and complaints. They're reviewing instances of any of the following, which includes the late, missed, or any no-show trips and the application certification process. And they are working to ensure that all rides are within FDA regulations and that passengers have a good overall experience. And those are our latest updates as today. You will have the opportunity to still hear from our representatives that are here to elaborate on any additional questions that you have. With that being said, I do want to now open it up to our public comments. Again, this is your chance to ask any specific questions, to provide your feedback, you know, good or bad. We'd love to hear it so that we continue to make these improvements. If you're on the phone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. Or if you are joining us um, on your phone or your laptop, you can just hit on the raise hand icon or alt Y. Please keep your hand raised and we will call you as we see it. And my colleague, Kristen, will be assisting me with that. The first hand I see up is Community Development Advocates of Detroit. So go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello, this is Ruth Johnson. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't change, rename myself to give my individual name, but I'm with Community Development Advocates of Detroit, but I'm also a transit advocate. Um, wanna uh, first uh, thank you for the update. Uh, there was a lot of good information, but it was almost too much that I could really comprehend and it really didn't go into detail. So I, my first question is, can I get the PowerPoint and links to where I can get more information on a lot of the updates that you gave? Um, so that's my number one question. My other things are follow up from previous things that I've commented on or asked about. Um, there had been a request uh, to have the DDOT director uh, participate in future uh, community input and uh, local advisory. Hey, hello, Mr. Oglesby. How are you? Didn't know you were out there when they did the intros. They didn't mention it. Glad to see your face in the place. Absolutely. Pleasure to see you. Sorry about that. I was in hiding. You know, sometimes you got to be stealth with it. 
Well, I would ask you not to be stealth because we appreciate having the leader, the director, visible, vocal, and available. So thank you for being here. Uh, I wanted to follow up with something that I had uh, raised with Mr. Oglesby. Is there any uh, way that we can honor those transit uh, employees or retirees that we have lost as a result of COVID-19? I still want some way to honor, even if it's just a plaque without a name, uh, a tree, something just to honor those people who I think transit workers and retirees took a disproportionate hit. Not that other city employees and other uh, Detroit residents and stakeholders haven't been affected, but it would be nice to recognize and honor those people, not necessarily by name, but just as a group. Um, I will renew my request for an organizational chart that gives titles because uh, Mr. Lozen just added something new when he introduced himself, drug and alcohol. I'm assuming it's not that he's drinking it, serving it or selling it, but somehow something in his title, he's never introduced himself with that. So I don't know if that's a new responsibility and if it is what that means, uh, but it's important for us to know who's in charge of what and just a brief reference to drug and alcohol and there was no I did not hear a verb or a noun after that, so I don't know what that means. Um, okay. I would also want to thank uh, the people who helped work to get the paratransit uh, RFP and contract information to me, and I got it out to others. So thank you. So those are some things that are renewing uh, requests or thanking for uh, people who work to get information that I had requested before. On some new things, I want to get an update, and I didn't hear about the City of Detroit's Transportation for People Master Planning and Mobility uh, Initiative and how DDOT is working with the Department of Public Works on that. I would also say I'm interested in understanding <sighs> the hard and difficult uh, impact that COVID has had on public transit agencies across the country and their finances and what the best you can do, Mr. Oglesby, looking into your crystal ball, what it looks like. I was pleased to hear that there were not going to be service adjustments in January, but just looking forward, what we can anticipate for DDOT as well as DDOT within the regional transit landscape or environment. Um, and uh, anything that DDOT is doing regarding the Woodward eight mile gateway planning and discussions in that area, just because of how it impact the State Fair development and the State Fair Transit Center. You sure you don't have anything else? Nope, that's okay, it. Okay, all right, because I almost got Carpos Tunnel writing all that down, but. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to let my staff tackle some of those. I'm going to hit the immediate ones that you mentioned. I love the idea of honoring the transit retirees. I talk to staff. We're looking into what we can and can't do. You know, it's it's been really tough and difficult during these times. You could imagine with COVID, just trying to pull off a, a lot of things. But I think this is very important, and now's the time. Um, so we are still working on that. But that is on our radar screen. We did not forget. Okay. Um, as far as an update or the impact, let me go to the impact of COVID and finances. So it's clear that uh, COVID has just ran rapid when, uh, and has taken away funding uh, from transit systems all around the world. A lot of my fellow um, uh, leaders in transit, I've talked to them, and I was on the American Public Transportation Association um, uh, meeting. And people are cutting because they just don't have the funds. If you're not getting your revenues and we're not collecting revenue, everybody is entering from the rear of the bus, something has to be done. So a majority of them are actually cutting service um, in JTA and Jacksonville, they're cutting, in, they're cutting drivers. Um, I'm proud to say we are not there. We are not doing that. Uh, we were able to use the CARES Act funding to plug the hole and our fingers are crossed that as we move forward and this um, uh, new vaccine, hopefully if it works, 
and or whatever takes place to make this uh, this pandemic kind of calm down a little bit, I think will move us towards the ability to eventually start collecting fares once we can find a safe, clean way to do it. And again, I say safe, clean way because as people are paying, we have to figure out how we can um, stay safe and sanitized between each payment. And there are various ways we're looking at that up to and including uh, cashless fare collection, sanitization machines. I mean, you name it, we're looking at all of that. So in the future, I don't see an immediate impact. I will tell you that the city is not going to be contributing as much as they used to to DDOT, which means we have to buckle down internally, but based on the numbers that I see, it will not affect how we provide transportation. Is that fair enough? So uh, could I ask when you say not contributing as much um, financially, are you talking about during this next budget cycle in terms of the contribution to the DDOT budget or Both. under the dis consent decree? No, no, I, I'm, I'm saying as it refers to both. So currently, um, you know, we depend on the casinos to provide funding to the city. And then a portion of that money comes to DDOT, believe it or not, um, that's just not happening. So we're just not getting the city contribution is what I'm referring to uh, specifically. So that is um, affecting us now, uh, but we're offsetting it. So we're okay. And then in the foreseeable future in the budget that I have laid out and it's not been approved yet, um, we've taken steps to uh, figure out how to absorb any shortfalls. So right now, uh, we don't see any effect on transportation as it stands today. Now, clearly, we're running a service, but we're running a reduced service because we have uh, a reduced ridership. Um, once ridership goes back up and Ricky is on, he can tell the exact number, but I believe we're around 50 to 60% or in that area. Um, but once it gets up to 100%, if we're running the same schedule that we have, we're going to have problems because of um, social distancing and only allowing 10 people on a vehicle. Um, once we have the barriers completely put up, we'll be able to allow more people. We're doing a calculation now with the health department. We'll be able to announce that. And the more, the merrier. Uh, we have to get these people out of this cold weather and do the right thing. So we're working hard on that. All right. Um, on the other thing, as far as the org chart goes, I think um, it, it, it would be beneficial uh, probably at the beginning of the presentation to kind of put the names of the individuals and the job titles. I popped in um, right in the middle of it, but I saw it. But maybe if we just do that list and if there's an issue, we can even have it put up. But I can assure you that uh, uh, Mr. Lozen, if he put up, uh, I didn't see what he had up there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I do that, uh, Miguel. I'm only the a ADA guy. That was yeah, Brian right. who talked about all those other things. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. sorry. I, I just heard drug yeah. and alcohol. I didn't remember who was. I'm sorry, Don. Uh, yeah. But that is an example. When you present it verbally, I, it's hard to remember. And I don't know what that means when you just say drug and alcohol as a shorthand, I'm sure, for something larger and more important than just drug alcohol. I fully understand. But you, what happens is, you know, amongst ourselves, we are so busy going 100 miles an hour. Sometimes we just assume people know what we're talking about. We assume people know the acronyms and we just keep running. So we'll slow down and make sure that we, um, we, we, we get our point across a little better. But I'm sure I, I know, Brian. Brian can talk. He can do his thing. So, so we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna try to uh, try try to do a better job. But thank you for pointing that out. Um, uh, as far as the master plan in Woodward and Gateway, is Mickey on? Maybe she can speak to it as someone from planning. Then I can sort of kind of dovetail in if you guys want to comment. Hi, yeah, I'm on. Um, Ruth, I think your question was more about engaging the community around Eight Mile and Woodward. Is that right or did I miss it's, that? It's everything. I don't know what DDOT's doing in, in its involvement, how riders are being involved in the larger community, uh, you know, other than just seeing it on the website uh, and participating in the gateway uh, public meeting. Um, I'm just curious uh, in all respects. Okay, so from the DDOT end specifically, we are, right now we're still reviewing and finalizing the location based on what we've heard from the public feedback. 
Um, once we have that, we will notify the writers and the community about what the location will be and provide some more context around that. Um, and then after that, once we have the location solidified, we'll be able to dig more deeper into the specifics as far as the functionality um, and the location and the facility itself. And then as a larger project, there are quite a few people involved. So to the best of my knowledge, the lead community person is Kim Tandy and she's the district manager um, for district two to make sure that all the right people um, and stakeholders are involved in the conversation and in the project as a whole. So I'm also referring to the eight mile Woodward gateway that's separate from the state fair development that's just looking at vehicular pedestrian um, amenities and control uh, that is being discussed and I guess there's some money for. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of, are you, so you're talking completely outside of the um, redevelopment that's coming. Again, I, I guess it is separate, but I don't know. So it's hard for me. That's part of my problem. I don't know if it is part of uh, the state fair discussions and planning or it's part of it, but there was a, a public meeting where they ask uh, community uh stakeholders to listen to presentations from three of the finalists for doing the design work on the gateway project. Okay, I would have to look into that because I'm actually not familiar with it. So I can dig around and get some information for you. Is that, but, that I'm not sure, is that uh, Mickey, that possibly could be what the DBA is doing as far as moving forward and building it, right? But I thought that that was going to start um, in January. So let's dig into that a little bit. Okay, yeah, I can do that. I do connect them because I feel like anything that's being done at Eight Mile and Woodward to improve traffic flow, pedestrian flow should be connected to whatever's being done with the State Fair Development Project. Okay. Ayabami? Okay, did we answer everything? Um, I didn't hear about DDOT's involvement in the streets for, for people, master transportation and mobility planning and how that's working. I actually have a person assigned to that that's not on that could probably speak to it a lot better than I can. So if there's any way uh, any one of you, you all could get uh, her information and I'll have, uh, I have Sam sitting in on that. I'll make sure that we can convey all the information you need. Great. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Yes, and we have your information, so I'll make sure that he gets that. And we'll also work to make our updates public. And again, thank you for the feedback in regards to that. And then also, too, that's for um, everyone that's available tonight, too. Again, they can elaborate on any of those questions that you have on the updates. Okay, I think we're ready to move to our next person, Kristen. Okay, the next hand I see up is Galaxy A10E. I hope uh, hope you can figure that out. You go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello, how you doing? My name is Angelo Walls. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, uh, I was brought here by, by a brother named Cunningham, and he was telling me that um that y'all was closing the transit center at 7 p.m. in a little bit. Is that right or is that wrong? The Rosa Parks Transit and I was told y'all was starting to begin to close it at 7 p.m. Is that right or is that wrong? That is correct. This is Chief Brown Transit Police. Okay, may I ask you why are you doing that? Because it's people that actually have jobs and families that they have to get to that don't have transportation that have to use public transportation. Well, it's not my call on what time the transit center closed. So who call is it that's in the meeting? transit center we're in the middle of a pandemic also just like everyone else and we're keeping it open strictly for laboratory facilities during the day um, and that's the only thing that we can allow in the uh, facility at this time because of the pandemic so y'all telling my question is y'all shutting down the buses because y'all usually keep the y'all shutting down the buses after seven o'clock and do you know it's people actually just be out here that have to wait on the bus after seven o'clock and it is winter time now. Yes. It might not hold no concern or value to you because I, I see that you're somewhere safe. Yes, you're correct.
concern is very valuable to us. And there are discussions currently in effect talking about the change in climate. We're very concerned about the health and welfare of people waiting for the bus. So those discussions are ongoing and we're trying to find the best solution that will be satisfactory and safe and healthy for everyone. So so what's one of the solutions y'all have, have came up with? Can I add some clarification really quickly, Chief? Do you mind? Yes, go ahead. Hi, I just want to clarify, the buses are still running. So the in, the interior part of the transit center, Rosa Parks Transit Center, closes at 7 p.m., but the buses mm -hmm. are still providing service. So the, you know, your 24-hour bus routes are still in operation as well as all the other bus routes that serve the transit center, and they're still pulling in and out. Okay. So bus service, okay. while it's reduced a little bit, it's not cut. Okay, I know I got two minutes. I have another question. I've been standing out here multiple times, and there's been people, it's probably been like four to five people on a bus, and they will ride right past me. I would have to wait like another hour or two for another bus that's coming down the main street like Grand River or something. You, how, how, how are you doing? Can you provide a time frame when that took place? It's usually during the, like the, it's usually like the early afternoon mm -hmm. and like late morning. What, what, what location? It didn't happen to me on the Grand River bus multiple times, Grand River, Wyoming. And it happened mostly on Grand River, one of the, Grand, one of the main busy streets. Grand River. Okay. Thank you for the input. And Finkel. And where? And Finkel. Okay. May I speak with that, uh, Director? Yes. I'm not a so character. We, how you doing? This is Brian Fisher, uh, Compliance. How you doing, sir? I'm not a character. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Um, I was saying, may I speak to that? Uh, I was speaking to my director um, in regards to that. I do apologize. There we go. Um, in regards to that, whenever you have um, that a bus is passing you up, please call into our customer service and file a formal complaint. Um, also, the complaint is online um, on our website. That way we can track that because when we notice that that is occurring, we will get out there, it will be investigated, and that line will be reviewed um, in regards to what's going on. But we can only do that once we receive that formal complaint. Um, the customer service number is 313-933-1300. It is also inside of the chat room. <clears throat> so once you do that, we can be able to go ahead and address um, your complaint um, on a formal basis because we follow the paperwork. Okay. And also, um, sir, if you go online, it's under the feedback form. Feedback form online. Yes, ma'am. That's all I wanted to express. I, I thank you for your time and your concern. Thank you. Okay, Chris. Okay. The next hand up I see is Cunningham. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, I'm live at the Rose Park Transit Center. Just let everybody know that the chat is open, which is appreciated. And the Honorable Mr. Oglesby is with us. Um, I've been doing this for over 10 years. No pay, no salary, none of that. Just a passion to improve public transportation and been through uh, before Dan Dirks, who's a friend, and then also uh, on to uh, Angelica Jones Johnson uh, and on. And they used to be very, very active and present at, uh, at uh, DDOT uh, meetings. And that is appreciated if you could do the same. Um, I wait at the, the transit center for clients to come up in regards to uh, taxi service and some of them remember my activism in regards to public transit and tell me that the transit center is closed. They need to go to the bathroom, social distancing, all that. Okay, they can't sit in and get warm. That's fine. But the simple fact that they need to use the restroom at 8 p.m., 9, 10, 11, 1 in the morning, the demographics of all the staff at DDOT a lot of them don't even take DDOT bus. They don't know how cold it is and they have to go to the bathroom. They have to use the restroom, okay? Uh, urinate and et cetera. And they don't want to catch a CSC or anything else. 
there's children, there's elderly people, and, and they're going to alleys and going over to the fence and urinating, and they don't want to catch charges for doing so. So that's something that needs to be considered. There's one more gentleman that's with me that he wants to speak in regards to public transport. The last time that I was at the meeting, I was tired of the same old voices, the same old faces, the same old people saying the same old thing at the same old meetings. So I wanted to do something about it. And I got some random people to come and speak their minds. When they call 933-1300 so the world knows, they get a little letter in the mail. Nothing ever happens in response. So I wanted them to, I taught them how to get on Zoom. I gave them the code to get on Zoom. Action speaks louder than words. And um, I just, I really am concerned. I no longer take the bus that often anymore, but I was on it for eight years. And the Bible says, what you do unto the least of these you've done unto me. And I'm a sinner saved by grace, but I know folks need to be able to use the bathroom from 7 p.m until five in the morning and all 24 hours. If nothing else, can something please? I have no skin in the game. It's not helping me, not hurting me. I'm worried about others. They need to be able to use the restroom during those hours. I plead with you, please allow your fellow citizen, your fellow man and woman and disabled women and children to use the restroom. Uh, Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, everyone. And um, I'm going to pass it on and all the other activists, thanks for joining on there. Um, keep fighting, you guys. Um, if you guys are getting paid for what you do, thank God for what you do. I don't, no skin in the game. I do this from the passion of my heart for the last eight to well, maybe 10 years. God bless you and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. I know the restroom issue was just brought up. I don't know if there's anybody would like to elaborate anymore, if there's anything that we can include tonight. Thanks again, um, Executive Oglesby. The bathrooms are a serious issue. God bless you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for your input, man. I just want to let you know that your input is heard and we hear you. We are in the process of looking into the bathroom issue throughout the system. Um, it's just not Rosa Parks where we're having our issues. So one of the reasons why we're not just focused on one thing, we're trying to fix everything for all. Um, I attend meetings. As a matter of fact, I can guarantee you that if we didn't have this pandemic issue, uh, we'd be in front of each other face to face. I'd have no problem with that. So I just want to let you know that I don't duck, I don't dodge, I don't hide. I'm right here for you. So um, we're going to continue to be up there. Uh, we don't want to, I heard you say to the activists, keep up the fight. I want to say, keep up the teamwork. Why don't we get together and I'll work together and be as one as we try to figure out these issues. And we're going to work hard to get to where we need to be. So with that, Ayabami, who's next? Thank you. We'll mm -hmm. continue to work together. Yes, sir. OK, the next on the list is John. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, yes, my name is John. And um, the brother Cunningham um, brought me to this meeting because um, I've been a writer for many years, and um, I was so shocked after getting off the work of seeing that the trans center was closed where I couldn't use the bathroom. And then, like they said, um, people are forced to use the bathroom outside. Um, there might be women walking past, children, and that's a big concern. Um, and then it got so bad to the point that I had to uh, force myself to go and save for a vehicle so I don't have to get on the bus no more. Because, you know, like the brother said earlier, when you be at the bus, they might have 10 people on the bus, which I understand the six feet um, distance, but it will be like, it will be like six, maybe eight to 10 people on the bus and they'll pass you by. And me and my uncle, we both, you know, suffer like he suffered from knee problems and I suffer from back problems. And we had to stand up so long that we had to catch another bus line to get downtown and for him to get home. 
until I got so fed up, I went and worked for some months and I'm um, saving until I got a car. And from time to time, I still catch the bus. And now what I do, I go to the hotel to use the bathroom when the trans center is closed. And I think if, if, if I can offer suggestions, I think they should take it to at least to about 10 o'clock. Cause you do people do have people that get off from work that can't just make it to their bus route and go home. They have to go stop in to use the bathroom. And then sometimes in some hotels, they don't allow you to go to use the bathroom, um, things like that. So it's like, we're really forced to, for nowhere to use the bathroom. And the most hurting thing that I've seen before you know, I understand the pandemic and things like that because I work in a restaurant from time to time and in the club. Not gonna understand that part. But the most hurting part I've seen is when it was raining so bad and it was raining sideways that the people couldn't go in nowhere for shelter. And even myself, I got drenched because I had to wait for a bus. So I was wondering, is there any plans in the future to kind of extend the, um, the hours in the trans center because I don't think seven o'clock is fair to all the um, DDOT riders, which is children, women, and older men and women. Thank you for your input, John. And I think we've just noted that again, they are investigating those concerns and your additional suggestions are noted. And it was mentioned before, just as a reminder, those cases where you're uh, talking about the missed bus or being passed by the bus, please report those as soon as possible by calling customer service, 933-1300. Uh, Again, that is important, either phone call or online and the feedback form. Thank you. May I ask, may I ask a question, uh, one more question? Do anyone on um, this Zoom Live have any relatives that that catch the um, the D doc bus, or have to go through any of this that any of this that we have to go through. Yes, absolutely. Well, anybody yes. in this so, catch so the bus? I suggest if if it's okay for me to say so, I suggest that when you do see your relative or your family member, could you ask them their experience too, and then maybe you can go deeper into having a little sympathy, a little more sympathy for us because it, this is complete torture because I myself was forced to, to think about going outside myself and use the bathroom. I'm like, no, because don't nobody want to catch no CSE case or no ticket. So you either have to hold it or pray to God that you can go somewhere um, like in one of these hotels, because a lot of these restaurants is either closed. Okay, sir, or I, don't I don't want, want, excuse me, I don't want to cut you out. We have a lot of people on the okay, line tonight. Like and minutes. we do, because you have addressed your concern All about right, the restroom. Ma again, just it is noted, and we appreciate it. So we do okay, understand your concerns like about it. We're going to go ahead and ready. move to our next person. Okay, the next hand I see up is Patricia Fidoa. Hi, Director Oglesby and staff. And I just really hope you get a chance to enjoy this holiday and this crazy year. And I just also want to thank you for all the work you've done during this crazy year. That's not lost on me. Um, so thank you. First um, issue, well, I've got, I've got about five, but the first two are the most important. I didn't, and maybe I didn't listen correctly, but I didn't get the um, fairgrounds timeline. And I just want to remind everybody that please pick a location based on what buses need, not what Amazon needs and, and other factors. Um, and then the second issue is future planning. You know, maybe starting this summer, we can start thinking about something other than COVID. And I would like to take, rather than just take our so-so system and make tweaks to it to make it better, I would love to get an excellent system and really move us up. And I'm talking outside the RTA. The RTA will do things, but it's still a problem to use DDOT and it takes forever. And that the, the um, RTA is not gonna change that. And then I also wanted to know the status of the driver CBA and wondering if we're making pullouts as uh, currently scheduled. Um, and I was wondering if our budget would return once the casino revenue begins again. 
Thank you. Mickey, were you, did you want to elaborate a little bit on Stay Fair? Hi, Patty. Um, yeah, really quickly. So we are still reviewing the feedback. We're wrapping up the equity analysis right now. It's being reviewed um, and we're going to go through with the team that's reviewing it to go over some suggestions that they have to just clean it up some um, and make it presentable for FTA. Um, and through that process, we'll be able to solidify the location. As far as a, an overall timeline, um, there's a lot of moving parts with this project. So because we are working with quite a few other departments, that are still working through some of their logistics as well. I can't give you a specific timeline, but anytime we have an update, we will be making sure that the information is made public and we're communicating our updates. In addition to on our website, we will have resources at the current transit hub, um, as well as um, other forms of communication. So if it, you know, if there's a meeting, there'll be email blasts. And then of course, we'll provide updates through this format here through the monthly meeting. As far as, uh, hello, by the way, how are you doing, Patricia? I'm she doing good? well. How are you, Director Oglesby? Oh, I'm hanging in there, you know, just living the dream. <laughs> there um, you go. <laughs> so um, you, you have some great points. You know, we're making sure that we're clear and transparent on the fairgrounds issue. So as we move forward through the process and we get, we, we're done listening to everybody and gathering all the information, we'll well, you, you will be one of the first to know, as 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 you know, um, and then we'll we'll just move forward from there. As far as future planning, you know, it, it's a little disappointing because this whole pandemic has really got us in a spin, right? And uh, we have plans to move everything to the next level. So what we're doing right now is instead of focusing on some of the major things that will come with a comprehensive operations analysis or a planning study, which we've done. Uh, uh, portions of, and we need to start executing some of those plans. But what we're doing right now is we're really strengthening ourselves internally, making sure we have the right people and the right jobs to be, to be able to execute something new and innovative. So, you know, we're, we're, we're having a lot of internal discussions on how to do things differently. And I, tru I truly believe as we move towards the summertime, like you said, hopefully things will loosen up a little bit. You'll be able to see some of the exciting things that we have coming on board. Um, we're working on bringing in our electric buses. I mean, we have some fun stuff on the way, but you know, it's getting, it's all getting kind of muffled, if you will, with what are we gonna do with fares, um, getting people out of the cold, dealing with the crowding issue. Uh, all of those things are really muffling it. But I agree with you. We are, our goal and the reason why I came here is not to have the system be the way that it's always been and to take it to the next level. My entire staff knows that. My entire staff is eager to move forward in that direction. Um, and I'm letting them loose. You know, they have an opportunity to be creative and do something different. And that's what we're going to do. Um, you know, as far as uh, the, co the, con the city contributions, uh, the answer to that question is, for you, you know how it works. Where there's money, there's transit, right? So uh, I anticipate that casinos will be up and booming and the city will be able to uh, collect the fares and we'll be able to move forward. But in the meantime, I have it set up in such a way uh, because we're still using some COVID funding that if we do get in a pinch, we will be able to move forward with the operations as it is set today. So that's good news. The bad news is that we're only running, like I said, about 50 or 60 percent. So if we're running like we are today and, <laughs> and our ridership goes up to our normal uh, higher percentages, uh, then we're going to have a challenge making sure that we can get people to where they need to go. We have a schedule right now that we can handle uh, based on the amount of drivers that we have. Um, we're working hard on getting new drivers and getting the drivers that we have to come to work. And once we can elevate the number of drivers, then we'll be able to expand our service. And I'm hoping that it hap happens simultaneously as we move towards the, uh, the warmer weather. Um, so fingers crossed, uh, we should be okay from a financial standpoint. I did not see any problems. Uh, as far as making pullout, I think Larry Luckett's on, or maybe Larry Smith, you guys could kind of talk about that. Yes. Uh, good evening, Ms. Fidua. Yeah, we, uh, we're currently making pullout. Um, we, you know, as Mr. Oglesby said, um, just trying to get 
drivers in to be in the seat to operate. And as you know, with this COVID situation, we don't know day day to day who, who we're going to have at work. Of course, we don't want employees coming to work feeling some kind of way and affecting infecting the whole operation. So we have to keep that in mind. At the same time, we keep in mind of our passengers and the citizens that we serve. And we know that, and we are doing everything possible to meet our obligations to provide daily transit service to Detroiters. Um, we still cleaning buses, you know, we still doing everything we can to make sure that we're not transporting COVID around the city. That's a big thing that Mr. Oglesby trying to make sure that we get a handle on. I mean, we don't want to be the, the, the carrier, you know, in a big 40 foot, 60 foot bus. So I can say, have patience with us um, and we're doing everything we can to meet our obligations. Also, just to kind of add in there, uh, some of the numbers behind that, just as Mr. Luckett was saying, um, just a little insight, because I know that we're curious about it. Uh, low 90% in the morning when it comes to AM pullout, it's a little better than our PM pullout. Our PM pullout is generally in the high 80%. So our afternoons are a little more challenging. Maybe you might be seeing that. So that's kind of so in the range. Not, of at. So we're not getting even our small pullout out. And it just, I mean, it seems like this should be a rallying cry to the mayor to start paying the drivers more. I, I still don't understand why that's not getting done. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Um, it's not as simple as saying pay the drivers and then you give them money. So the union has been in negotiations prior to my arrival. And for various reasons uh, on both sides, that hasn't been executed. Uh, I've taken a look at the proposal. Um, I'm not going to get into the detail of it because I can't. But I will tell you that the proposal was held up because it's probably not as lucrative as it was when it was offered years ago when they turned it down. Unfortunately, years ago, the one that they turned down had a lot of money attached to it. And as time has moved on and the city has doesn't have the money anymore, uh, a lot of those things can't be offered. Um, increases are uh, a good way to go, but to tell you quite frankly, our drivers are starting from such a low base. It doesn't matter what percentage we give them, they're still not probably not going to be at the higher levels that they would like or uh, compared to a lot of other places. But we're talking about 20 years of management issues. I can't fix them. I've been here, I've been here seven months, so there's no way I can fix that. And as I came, um, I can't even uh, give input uh, meaningful input on those negotiations because they're already towards the end. We're getting ready to close that out. So it wasn't uh, a situation where I could come in and say, hey, we need to give more money. I think um, the financial cry that I've been hearing, and I've just got done speaking to 40 drivers this morning um, during training, uh, there is a big cry for money, but it's more on the co it's more on the hazard pay side. Why did you stop our hazard pay? And unfortunately, that was connected to money that we received from the state. So when that ended, that, you know, when the, that, that funding ended, not only did the DDOT drivers get cut off, but police, fire, everybody did. Um, and that's one of the things that is really frustrating to the drivers. Um, they know that their pay is where it is, and they know that in this contract, it'll go up. And I'm hoping that they'll be happy with that. But we have to look, um, to your point, um, funding and getting money will go more towards hazard pay, which would be an immediate shot in their pocket, so to speak. So um, in one way, there's a process we have to go through, but in another way, uh, there is a possibility to, to, to try to come up with something. And, and uh, I've been speaking up, so we'll see what happens. And also just to clarify, that's not a, the bus isn't completed all the way through as canceled for the entire length of service. That's just on time at time pull out that percentage number is. So, you know, when it comes to being a few minutes off, you know, when it comes to pull out, that's a measurement that we're using as a criteria. So, right. And perhaps, perhaps one of these, one of the meetings, maybe we'll start off with Ricky doing a little presentation on, on uh, the ins and outs of our pullout to kind of provide clarity, because when you just 
uh, hear percentages, sometimes it gives a, a false sense of what's really going on out there, but we have no problem letting folks know. No, I would appreciate it because it just doesn't sound like most agencies have a problem with pullout and it's, it's always a distressing situation. Well, I, I can tell you that that's not true. A lot of agencies have a problem with pullout. Uh, a lot of places I've been to, uh, the last place in Jacksonville when I was doing some consulting, that was a major problem was pullout. Uh, pullout um, is a challenge based on various things. We have uh, our own various problems. Uh, and, and of course, for some reason, you know, we've had, we have, we have COVID, we have COVID breakout sometimes. If a person uh, feels sick or has been around someone, they get quarantined for 14 days or up to seven to 14 days. So then that driver's out and there's a domino effect um, from the pullout standpoint. Um, but no, it's not unusual. Uh, we can do better, but it's a lot of, there's a lot of internal stuff we're working on. I can assure you it will get better. Thank you. Yep. Okay, next on the list is Renard. Hi, um, can you all hear me? Good evening. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I just want to again, want to thank all the employees and the drivers for their hard work and everything that you all do to just keep this bus system running during um, the pandemic. Um, I also wanted to make a complaint about the Rosa Parks Transit Center as well too. I actually still ride the bus. I've been riding the bus since I was a toddler. Uh, so 15 years on and off. Um, I care about this system. And I really don't like how dry riders are being treated. It's, it's as if um, we're not allowed in the building after seven o'clock. A lot of people still work um, well into like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And the thing is, I get off of the 16 and go to the transit center and the door is locked. There's no explanation why the door is locked and there's no opening and closing hours. So it's almost like that the building is ran on its own arbitrarily by the employees that get to stay warm in there while we're sitting outside cold at nighttime. People still ride the bus at nighttime, believe it or not, as well, too. So I have an issue with that. And I think that the building it needs to be extended to later hours for bus riders that don't work nine to five jobs like everyone else. I work a job, I work nine to five, but I have some off hours too. And But it's not about me, it's about other people as well too. And you have elderly people and you have people with disabilities that can't go to any other restroom in downtown Detroit. That's the only public restroom down there. City Hall is closed. Western Hotel does not have to have people go into their building. But um, I just wanted to be on record for that. My question that I have is that Bus riders um, are entitled to an equity analysis um, with projects with the State Fair Development, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, with the State Fair <laughs> uh, Transit Center. What is the progress um, since we were promised that equity analysis, will that be published anytime soon? Um, that's one of my questions. And my other question is, since the city it's not gonna be funding DDOT as much, I'm worried about the state of Michigan and federal funding, what emergency, um, like funding or contingencies do DDOT have in case this doesn't work out at the national or state level? Um, because I'm hearing in other transit departments, they have to cut service, uh, like weekend service, early ending service as well, especially in the greater DMV, um, Washington DC area, they're cutting service because of the lack of funding or funding is drying up. What's gonna to happen to DDOT um, next year in the first quarter? Um, the other thing I'm worried about, too, is this rush to collect fares is dangerous to do so. But I also think it's the wrong call to make, at least for the first quarter, because of the fact that so many families and people do not have jobs. I, I can't ask my friends, hey, are you going to work? I, I literally have to ask people, are you still working? So asking people to pay $70 a month for a monthly pass or $20 out of their pocket in the midst of a depression right now is not fair to people. So what's going to be done about that? Mickey, do you have the uh, equity analysis part? <clears throat> yep, so we have wrapped up the draft of the equity analysis. It is now sitting with the compliance team who handles Title VI. Um, so Brian might be able to provide some more details about the timeline, but 
we are reviewing it with Title VI and with that team. Um, and as of now, we have a meeting tomorrow to talk about suggestions that they have for the equity analysis. Brian, do you have anything else to add? No, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, we have uh, reviewed it. And once we speak with um, the rest of the team, as uh, she said, we have the meeting tomorrow um, in regards to making sure that that um, location analysis is done properly. Um, as we're working to um, do everything right, we'll definitely have it published because um, that is a requirement. Um, and it will say draft on it once it's published. And once we have the uh, final one there, it will be on the website. Thank you. Okay, so as far as um, <clears throat> other systems and other agencies, I kind of touched on a little bit. You are correct. There are a lot of places that are cutting weekend service. They're trying to find every place to cut every place they can. Um, I can tell you that the current budget that we're working in is set throughout the fiscal year until July. So as far as the first quarter goes, there are no cuts in the foreseen future and we have the funding. In addition, in our back pocket, we still have COVID funding that we have not used yet in anticipation for that, because as you know, it's emergency funding. Um, so we still are there. In addition, when I spoke to the American Public Transportation Association, they're talking about a another uh, funding source that may be available. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm looking forward to that as a possibility. But as we move forward, and I just uh, put together the first version of the budget, it does not include any cuts. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to increase pol police presence, transit, uh, routes, I'm trying to put everything in there I can uh, with the funding that we have. So um, as far as um, our service first quarter, we're in good shape. Um, as far as fare collection, that one's a little tricky. Hold on one second, I've got to clear my throat. Okay, okay, I'm back, can you hear me? All right, so as yes, far I as- Yes, Yep, okay, good. As far as the fare, um, that one's tricky because we all want to make sure that when it's time to collect fares, it's safe. Um, the reason why we stopped collecting fare wasn't because people couldn't afford it, it was because of COVID and for uh, the spread of the pandemic issues. Um, it's unfortunate that it's morphed into uh, what it has today with people not having jobs, but that really wasn't the purpose of our not collecting fare. Um, the answer to this question goes hand in hand with the answer with, with the question that you had before, because you can't say, well, you know, they're going to cut service. What are you doing for emergency funds to cut service? But on the other hand, don't collect fares even though fares are $20 million of your, of your funding. So, you know, it can't be both ways. We either have to pull our emergency funding and start collecting fares or not collect fares and cut service. You only have a certain amount that you can do. Now we have enough to run the way that we're running now. So we're going to be okay. Collecting fares could possibly be that emergency additional emergency money that we have moving forward in the future. So, um, we're looking to see the right way to do it. We're not trying to um, um, affect people who um, don't have jobs, but in the other, on the other side of it, if we don't collect fares, our drivers won't have jobs. So it's tomato, tomato, so to speak. We're in a process of looking at the best road. And of course, like I said, we're not going to collect fares until it's safe. So that will continue on until we figure it out. I don't have a date right now. Uh, on when we could possibly collect fares, um, but we're going to keep moving forward. Thank you. Is um, do fares actually go to DDOT, or I, I was understanding that it goes to the general fund for other city departments to use. So, well, how do fares actually function in DDOT? Let's say this COVID never happened. And thank you so much, Director, for clarifying uh, the no, other not, answers. Not a problem. So the funds we get the funds go into our revenue bucket. So. DDOT's funds, let's say, for example, hypothetically, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think it's roughly $20 million that we'd normally get. So if we started collecting fares and everything was fine and all was well with the world, um, in January, we'd be getting another $10 million that would go towards transit. It wouldn't go towards anything else.
No problem. I think we I want to yield. Question. Yeah, I'm going to yield just because other people have questions too. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Okay, the next person with their hand up is Larry Verse. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Good evening, all. I won't say it's a delight, but I'm glad to see that you're all here and healthy. And I do have some comments, and I've got to start with one. When it comes to the bathroom at uh, Rosa Parks Transit Center, I've run into several locations where it's actually closed in the daytime. Now, the reason I don't know, I wasn't told. And the second point on that is, oftentimes I didn't have to use the bathroom, but others did. And when I suggested that they call the customer service number and file a complaint, out of five people, only one was willing to do it. The others were like, oh, they ain't gonna do that anyway. Okay, maybe I know different, but that's the impression that the public has for the most part, and it's not good. And something needs to be done about it. Another point is, I don't know who's handling the email for communication, but they busted it this time because we were just getting it as you started. You know, the notice there for the meeting that comes in the emails? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the past, I had asked about uh, a health assessment analysis for bus riders relative to the state fair issue. And I would like to see that irrespective as to where you put it. Really, I think it is important, especially for Detroiters who have respiratory problems above the state issue, state level generally, and actually above the federal level generally. And you're talking about impeding people's health even more based on where you put it or helping them based on where you put it. And I think that should be a serious determining factor in where you put it. Uh, finally, I'd like to say, I do see improvements even in these hard times. I know it's rough not only for us, but for you all too, because you're struggling to get things done. And believe it or not, over the past couple of months, I've actually had fewer complaints than usual. Things have been running relatively fair, all things considered. And I wish there could be more buses. You know, I understand there's a driver problem, but I don't know how you solve that. Mm -hmm. And on that point, I will yield. Good evening, Mr. Burst. This is Chief Brown, Transit Police. I just wanted to touch on the uh, restrooms being closed. Uh, there are times, various times during the day that the restroom will be temporarily closed strictly for cleaning and sanitation purposes. And then they'll be reopened, but they have to close them temporarily to uh, sanitize and clean them. Okay, is it possible that a sign or something could be put up, clean, will open shortly or something? Because, uh, how shall I put it? Some of the people are becoming extremely disgruntled, let's put it like that. And I think knowing why it's closed would be a big help. I agree, sir. So we'll look into making sure communications are out there for the general public explaining things. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Verse, 
Yes, thank sir. you. This is this is uh, Mike L. Oglesby. I just want to say thank you for giving your comments, and I want to let the record show that Mr. Verse said things look like they're getting a little better. True. <laughs> I ride the bus almost every day. Yes, sir. I'm medically prohibited from driving. I'm active. Even though I'm a senior, I'm active, and I do get around quite a bit, and I usually ride three or four buses most days. Just say at least five out of the seven days a week. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate you. So, Joe, so we want you to let us know the good, the bad, and the ugly, but we also want to know more of the good. So thank you for uh, giving us an update and continue to do so, please. I'm going to let you know all of it. I'm going to tell you the truth. I know that. I was going to speak quickly on the email, uh, Mr. Verse. I'm not sure... No emails were sent today. The community input meeting was actually sent last week and a newsletter that had information about today's meeting was sent yesterday. So I'm not sure what's going on in the email, but I do want to assure that the email was sent last week. And again, there was a email yesterday regarding the newsletter, but I'm not aware of anything sent out today, especially right before the meeting. But we will. Okay. I don't know when they sent. I only know when they arrived. Right. So I don't know if it's an email issue, if something just, you know, traffic, but we'll just keep pushing and hope that you'll get them sooner. Um, but I do want to just wanted to confirm that it was sent last week. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I have nothing else at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the next person, uh, the next hand up is Mason. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Mason. I'm with the Motor City Freedom Riders, um, which is a Metro Detroit Rest Riders organization. Um, I had a couple questions and things to bring up. Uh, first, I just wanted to see if we can get an update on the shields um, in the buses, whether they've been fully rolled out to um, all buses uh, for driver protection or if there are still some to go. Um, and then secondly, um, we've collected a lot of reports from uh, riders in the last couple of weeks about um, buses, um, passing people up even though they're not full or might be completely empty. Um, one woman texted me a couple days ago saying that the uh, she was passed by three Warren buses in a row, um, none of which seemed to be particularly full. Um, I'm, I think that might be potentially connected to the shield issue if drivers aren't feeling safe picking additional people up. Um, and then I also wanted to uh, verify that I have the correct um, email contact um, for you, Director Oglesby. Um, I had uh, emailed you a couple times this fall, just trying to um, get some clarity about how DDOT wants to receive um, reports from us from things that. Uh, bus riders have reached out to us complaining about um, as far as format and level of detail and such. Okay, so staff, do you have um, Mason's contact information? Mason, do you get my emails? Because if not, then no, but if so, then yes. <laughs> but I don't, I think I emailed you a couple weeks ago and didn't get a response or like a month ago. Right? Maybe. I know that we also have a uh, somebody from Motor City Freedom Riders um, email info. So what, uh, if not, we can always take it again, uh, but we do have a contact from Motor City, so we can okay. definitely take yours. Get that, to, get that to me and I'll, Mason, uh, I'll reach out to you and get you what you need. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Um, no problem. Update on the shields. I'm going to, I'm going to split this one up. I'm going to let Mr. Luckett, um, uh, talk about it a little bit, but in short, we've been working diligently to get these shields in. We have some, um, just like everything else, 
even the provider of the shields to suffer from some COVID issues. So the install was actually stalled because of COVID. Can you imagine that? Um, there was one point where we ordered, we, we, we have installers there's some issues there. We have some issues with the arrival of some of the um, equipment and some parts that are being put in. But all in all, it's moving along pretty well, and we're getting we're getting a lot of them in. Uh, before Larry does kick into that, I will tell you, um, if a, if a bus is driving by and um, there there it's not empty or there's an issue. We need to look into that. I can assure you it's not because the barriers in or not, because right now we're putting the barriers in, but we still have the chain up. We have not extended the number of people allowed on the bus yet, but the quicker that we can get these barriers in, the more people we can get on the bus and get out of the coal. So we're working diligently to pull that off. Uh, Mr. Luckett. Yes, sir. So um, welcome. So to date, um, we have installed 204 barriers in, out of our 288 buses. Um, you know, and, and as Mr. Oglesby said that, uh, you know, everybody, this pandemic has touched all ways of life. Uh, is you know, material, staffing, and, the crew that's here installing is having the same issues. You know, they traveling in from out of town um, and, you know, they're doing the best they can to get here to install. So we're definitely doing our best to hold them to task to get these shields in as uh, soon as we possibly can. Um, that's our goal. Um, and, and thanks to, you know, the persistence of Mr. Oglesby, I mean, I think we moved relatively uh, swiftly in getting what we got installed, to be totally honest. So I, I really appreciate that because that took a little bit of heat off of me. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, believe me, we're doing everything we can to get these shields in. So that way, as um, Director Oglesby said, we can move the chain and kind of extend a little bit of the uh, area inside the culture. Um, we're working with the health department to try and figure out other methods where we can increase the capacity. So we're doing everything possible. We know the weather is changing rapidly here in the last couple of days. So we're taking that in consideration. But um, so by the, the, the week of the 28th, we should have 235 barriers installed. Right. And and that and for us, that's monumental because to go from where we were when we first started to where mm -hmm. we are now is amazing. And I'll also tell you that um, we're way ahead of uh, some our, our sister agency, SMART. They haven't even ordered their barriers yet. They have their own makeshift barriers, but as far as the V-Shield barriers, the one we're putting in, we're, we'll be done by the time they there's a arrive. So we're doing pretty good. Yep. Okay. As far as the buses passing on Warren, we're going to have to look into that part. We'll we'll have staff uh, look deeply into what's going on there. So I've I've jotted that note down, and thank you for bringing it up to us. If I may. Yes, you may. Thank you. This is Ms. Kane, Regulatory Compliance Officer. I used to work in customer service. It's imperative if you're having a problem out there on the road that you contact customer service at 933-1300. You can also go on the City of Detroit's website under the feedback and you can also make your complaint known that way as well. Because unless operation knows what's going on, there's nothing else they can do. I understand that you rather voice it but at least if you have it in the system, then you know which bus line you were on, which direction you were going and where you were standing in the time, it's easier for them to track this complaint. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you, uh, Ms. King for putting on another hat and filling that in for us. We appreciate it. I know you wear many of them, but we're gonna, every mm -hmm. once in a while, we're gonna pull on you to help out in all kinds of ways. So I appreciate it. You're welcome.
Okay. Uh, Robert Pavlovsky, I'm going to go ahead and unmute yourself. Can you guys hear me at all? Yep. Okay. Uh, first thing I'd like to start off saying is uh, I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe. Um, hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday. And I would like to say thank you for Mr. Uh, Director Oglesby for being here tonight. Um, after the last two meetings, I'm very grateful. But first thing I'd like to start off saying is uh, routing. Uh, Route 30, Liver Noise, and Route 54, Wyoming. It's hard to make a transfer in the downriver area during the pandemic, and, and you know, especially uh, before the pandemic. I was going to make a suggestion to you guys if you guys could possibly extend liver noise in Wyoming into River Rouge, either to Memorial Park or to City Hall. Memorial Park, there's a shelter at Great Lake Street near that McDonald's. So I think that'd be a great transfer opportunity or whatever's closer in your guys' range because 41 Schaefer is right there. That'd be great transfer opportunity as well. And then also, Route 26 Junction, your guys' new route that you guys released last year in December, and Route 11 Claremont, that would be a great uh, ending point at the water treatment plant where they currently have the last stop for liver noise at. It'd be a great transfer opportunity for Claremont and Junction there, and maybe expand it a little bit more, especially with 41 Schaefer and, you know, possibly all the other routes that I suggested. Those would be great. And I'd like to see maybe an expansion in those routes, especially liver noise in Wyoming, because you know, you could pot you you could get connection from down river all the way up to the fairgrounds and you don't even need to go downtown. That that would be amazing because then it avoids people getting on Schaefer and then having to, you know, get on either eight mile or a smart route that would really help. And now the second thing I'd like to uh, ask is, so I congratulate uh, Og uh, Director Oglesby for getting those um, shields in for the drivers because it, it must be a living hell for those drivers. And I completely feel their pain on all the assaults. And I think, you know, I'm on their side with the drivers completely. And the shields, great work. Now, the next step I'd like to see the next year since you guys got those shields in, it would be nice if, you know, because there's plenty, I think, plenty of social distancing around that. Is there a possibility when we get into January, we could start, char uh, like, charging fares again, you know, boarding through the front door? Because you have those shields, you know, block, you know, people's, you know, pre people's air from coming in towards them and, like, giving them the social distancing that they need. That would be kind of great. And I was going to ask about when you guys going to charge fares again, but Renard already asked that. And you guys already clarified it, so I don't really need to ask that. And I, other than that, I think you guys are doing really well besides the whole bathroom issue. And I really don't need any uh, clarification or you guys to elaborate on that because I'm pretty sure I've heard enough of that tonight. But other than that, in the Rosa Parks Transit Center bathroom issue, you guys are doing really well. I mean, all the other routes have been doing great. You know, drivers have been really nice. You guys are really, you know, you guys listen to what the people have to say. You guys take it into consideration. Like, you know, we know where you're, you know, where we're coming from and stuff like that. You guys, and you listen to the people and you care about people. And I love coming to these meetings because at least you care about what people have to say and you take and you, you know, help the people out and you make those changes. For people to you know have easier connections or make it easier for people to ride DDOT and I really appreciate you guys for that and the last thing I'd like to congratulate is uh, Don Lozen's audio it's really better than the last time he didn't sound like Darth Vader this time but I think it was pretty good. I think it was pretty funny his little voice with Darth Vader. I can admit that. Compliments well, on yeah. that. Like, I, I understand Darth Vader's job is open now. Uh, so, you know, uh, just practicing the, the audition. Hey. That's all. Don, In fact, I checked my audio before we started tonight to make sure there'd be no more Darth Vader. Hey, that, I love that's... that he noted that. 
<laughs> yeah, that that is some good stuff. I like Robert. Robert, I'm gonna have to see. Uh, you know, you gotta keep your eye on jobs at DDOT. We got a lot of them posted. Uh, seems like you have our routing system down pretty good. Uh, I, hopefully, my staff took notes on all of those uh, suggestions and ideas. And if not, hopefully, they'll be able to get in touch with you because I'd be interested to hear some more of your thoughts. Um, you can send them in or whichever way uh, we can gather them. Um, I'd appreciate that. Also, as far as the fair thing goes, you know, it's funny. People have different opinions about when, whether we should have fares or not. Just think about it. Uh, just a while ago, I was just told don't charge fares. Now I'm told to charge fares. And that, that happens all the time. We are looking to, for an opportunity to charge fares. But again, I'm not going to charge fares unless it's safe. Um, if I could charge fares safely in January, I would, but I can tell you honestly, there's no way I could do it that quickly. Um, we are looking at some opportunities, and if I could do it within the next few months, so be it. And if not, we're going to continue as we are, but I'm not going to rush it uh, from the safety standpoint. So thank you for bringing that up. And yes, um, once the barriers are all in, we can charge to the front door, but as you heard Mr. Luckett say, uh, we'll have about 200 and I think eight or over, a little over 200 installed. Um, we really, to be comfortable, we have 288 buses. We want to get as close to having them all installed because once we start charging from the front of the bus, the buses without barriers have to be taken out of service. So we have to make sure we right. have enough buses for service, right? Right. And I completely understand, you know, that. And you know what? It, it's okay. And I completely understand where you're coming from. I was just suggesting because, I mean, I was on liver noise uh, yesterday and it was you know, I, I see that there's plenty of social distancing on that uh, with those shields. But, you know, and I haven't seen very many people on like those key routes. I mean, it's just, right. let me admit that. But I mean, it, it was just a suggestion and maybe you guys might take it into consideration. And, I really, like to, and I really, you know, like to see that in the near future. But yeah. other than that, you guys are doing a great job of what, you know, other things. I mean, and trying to get listening to the people on what they have to say. But I do want to clarify one more thing with uh, the transfer opportunity when it comes to 54 Wyoming and Route 30 Liver Noise. If you guys could extend those into River Rouge, you know, you have an easier connection to the 125 Smart Route. You'll have an easier connection to that. And you'll have easier connection from people that live in like Lincoln Park, Southgate, Wyandotte that take that 125. They could take that into Rouge. And then if they want to you know, hop on Liver Noise or Wyoming, they could get on that and take that to the fairgrounds. Downriver and the fairgrounds would have an easier connection if you guys extended that. But other than that, I really do not have anything else I have to clarify with you guys or mention besides those things and Don's audio. But, <laughs> but other than that, I hope you guys have a great holiday, a great new year. And I'm looking forward to see new changes coming into 2021. Um, beginning, middle, end, whichever, during or after the pandemic, during the pandemic, I'm looking forward to see some new changes from you guys. You guys are doing really well on what you guys have accomplished over this year. I'm looking forward to see more in 2021. Stay safe. Happy holidays, guys. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thanks so much, Robert. And you got us ending on a positive note because um, we're approaching that 630 mark. So we do appreciate all your input and that positive feedback because um, we really do care. So we're happy to hear you acknowledge that and just letting everyone know that we are working on everything that you all provide us. Some solutions are we can able to produce faster than others, but we do hear you and we are working to make uh, all those great improvements. I do want to give the staff any opportunity to speak one last time before we close tonight. If there's anyone who has anything to say, to say or is it DDOT? There's a couple um, questions in the chat. So just for Ted, if you're still on for clarification, the restrooms are available in the transit center while the transit center is open. So the rest of the transit center is not accessible right now, but riders still have access to the restrooms while it is open. Um, and that's the only one that I have an answer to. Okay. Thank you, and we're gonna save the chat. So if there is any unanswered questions, we'll work to get those answers. So thank you for that. Anyone else? Um, yeah, don't forget to fill out the uh, voluntary survey that'll be sent. 
Um, that way we can also track um, who's at the who's at these meetings as we're trying to do better with our public participation um, and community input as we continue to go forward. Thank you for that reminder. And you will see that pop up once that uh, webinar, once our webinar closes, if you haven't did the link during the meeting, you'll have the opportunity after the meeting as well. Is that all? Focus. Yes, yes. In the words of Don Lozen, happy holidays to you. No, that's bad, isn't it? Um, I think I, I love I love listening to the input of the community because without that input, we don't know what's going on. So we need you all to let us know um, what's going on out there. You know, again, I had a long talk with a lot of the drivers and I love listening to one side. And then when I hear the other side, you know, you're both actually saying the exact same thing. Uh, we have to do a better job and step up our game. Uh, we've been doing it. A lot of the stuff we've been improving is behind the scenes, and hopefully it'll be reflected in the long run in the service. Um, I appreciate everybody coming out. I appreciate you. I appreciate the staff. Um, enjoy your happy holidays and uh, happy, happy, have a happy new year. Happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. Yep. Happy holidays. Safe. And remember, mass up. Yes. Mass <laughs> up. Stay safe. Mask up. Stay safe. Mask up. Good night. Good night. Good night.